Oh, Lord, we come to you today just uh, seeking the truth of your word. Just reveal to us what we need to hear. Help us to have eyes that see you and all that you've offered us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm here to answer your questions about heaven today. Are you ready? Okay. I'll answer them in the order that I got them. Yes, yes, no, maybe. And absolutely, there will be ice cream in heaven. So, amen. That's all you wanted to know, right? I know that was the most uh, asked question of all. We're going to follow this in detail, and we'll see where the Spirit leads us. We might stop and focus on something if you have a question. Uh, go ahead, feel free to ask. But the, f there's a couple of foundational truths that if we're not together on, really there, we can't go any further because we're going to God and His Word. And God is God's Word the truth. And Jesus said, your Word is truth. He made it very clear. It, does anybody want one of these that didn't get one? We got more up here. You can grab one after the service too. And and is Jesus' word the truth? And he says uh, in our, our reading that we're going to read here in a second, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So if we agree on that, we can move forward. But even if we have that same solid foundation, there are some challenges, uh, significant communication challenges. There's such a huge intellectual difference, uh, gap between God and human beings. I mean, take, take a baby. We have some babies here. What a challenge it is for human beings to communicate with babies. And it's even more difficult for God to communicate with us because we are so much less than... I mean, aren't we glad that God is so great that we can't even be on the same level as He is? So that's a challenge right there. Uh, we also uh, often read and hear with uh, preconceived ideas. I think you know what I'm talking about. If you talk to your spouse, your friend, somebody else, so often they don't hear what you said because they are looking at it through different eyes. And too often we come to God's Word and we want something and so that's what we hear. So we just pray this morning that we can hear with uh, God's ears and see with God's eyes. Uh, we, we have discernment, trouble discerning what's literal and figurative. You know, there's a lot in the Bible that it's all truth, but sometimes God's given us pictures to relate that truth to us, and sometimes it's literal. And d different people choose different uh teachings or, or ways to receive it at different times. And lastly, there is so much information out there on heaven and hell. Some of it's true, some of it's not. Uh, we were at the Christian bookstore yesterday. Number one seller. What is it? Heaven is for real. And look how long that's been around. I imagine quite a few of you went to that movie. I, I, I looked up on the internet and there's a whole handful, a couple handfuls of books of people who've died and seed, seen heaven and related uh, what they saw. In fact, one of them uh, was an atheist and didn't believe in heaven and hell. And uh, God chose to work in this way and reveal heaven to this person and radically changed how this person conceived, per perceived heaven and hell and, and believed in God then. So there's so much out there. And, you know, the other thing I've learned is the more I've come to know, I realize the less I know. At the same time, the more I come to know, the more I realize what I need to know, I do know, and it's clear. 
So I'm going to try to be very honest with you this morning and just uh, relate the truth as the Scriptures say it. And if there's a doubt, I'll, I'll, I'll let you know. I mean, th the doubts are not in any way that in any places that really make any eternal difference. But don't we like to know the answers? But I'll be very honest. I, I think if we knew the answer, if we really knew what heaven would be like, it would be too hard for us here on earth. Let, let us, uh, Abby, if you want to put that up, let us, I skipped the reading here. These are Jesus' words to his disciples. Very comforting, powerful words that we often uh, read when we uh, release a loved one to the Lord because it deals with this. So let's uh, read Jesus' words together. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Okay, the questions. Is heaven for real? Well, there's no doubt, according to God's Word, it is for real. There are so many references to eternal life with God. Uh, and what is it life like? And I, I, I think it can be summed up that heaven is just living intimately in the presence of God. And there's blessings there beyond measure, beyond comprehension. Let's look at a few verses the, we I just read this we just read it together uh, Jesus says my father's house has many rooms this is describing heaven how many of you remember what the King James says there in my father's house are many mansions uh, you know it gives two different uh, looks at it we might say boy I like the word mansion because that means it's going to be awesome and that's what the writer was trying to get across when they used the word mansions to describe this. But rooms, now it's probably good that we don't live this way today, but you know when uh, they got married back then, they used to just keep adding on to the house. And it, there's an intimacy there where you live close to family. Sort of like I lived next door to my grandparents when I was growing up. So there's many rooms to this house. There's a closeness. So whichever way, one's showing the intimacy and the other showing the awesomeness of what God has ahead for us. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And then the next verse. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning, or crying, or pain, for the old order of things have passed away. You know, I think that's a verse that we take great comfort in. Basically, what's it saying? There there will be no more bad things happening in our lives. N nothing bad. That That's all behind us. That's just on this earth. Uh, we won't have to struggle with any of these things that are so painful for us today. And then... Uh, Paul writes, but our citizenship in heaven is in heaven, and from it we must await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body to his glorious body by the power that enables him even to subject all things to himself. So we will have a glorious body. You know, I didn't appreciate that when I was younger, but as I'm getting older and I'm having more aches and pains, I say, man, I'm really looking forward to that. 
it'll be so great not to have the aches and pains. But what, what, what's that body going to be like? I don't know, but it's going to be like His glorious body. Can we comprehend that? No. But we can love that, and we can look forward to that. And then I, the next one, I heard a voice from heaven saying, Write this, from now on, those who die believing in the Lord are blessed. We will be blessed. That's what heaven is. You know, we could say, we could ask so many specific questions, and I would have to say, I don't know. But blessings will be there. Now, the next one's the, my proof verse that ice cream will be in heaven. You have made known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence with eternal pleasures at your right hand. So David wrote this thousands of years before ice cream was ever discovered, but he still had an eye on the end prize. But you might have some other eternal pleasures that you might picture. I don't know. I do know what's going to consume me and what's going to just bless me. Because there's nothing better than being with someone you love. Now, I was at uh, a wedding in Florida with my brother and his family as his daughter got married. It was just so much fun being with all those people that we loved each other. We're just going to be so drawn to our Savior, aren't we? We're just going to be, we're going to say, wow, I didn't know you loved me so much when we see his hands and his feet in his side. When we look at him with God's eyes, we'll just be overwhelmed. Now you might have some, you know, what, what are some typical questions? Will dogs be in heaven? Will this work be in heaven? Where all these things, I think most of these things are going to be there. I mean, uh, uh, in the Garden of Eden, it was perfect, wasn't it? And there were all those things there. So why would heaven be any different than Eden? But I don't know. But I do know that it's going to be abundant blessings for you. And the hardest thing you're going to have in heaven is keeping your heart in your body because it just wants to jump out with joy. So, heaven is for real, and it is good. Is hell for real? Yes. What is it like? You know, there's so many verses in the Bible that talks about hell. There, there's an alarming number of people that don't believe in heaven or hell today, and there's more and more people that don't believe in hell. But, but God's Word makes it clear. Jesus said in Matthew 23, How will you escape being condemned to hell? And then he said, and now we don't take this literally, but we understand what he's saying. And if your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life crippled than with, with, two, than with two hands to go to hell to the unquenchable fire. I don't know if fire will be hell. I don't know if that's a picture. But I can picture myself in fire. And that's one of the last places I would want to be, right? I mean, that is pain. If you're in a fire, I'm sure there's just one thing. that, If you can't be rescued, you just want it to be over with. So it, it's pain beyond measure. It, it's, it's horrible. And... Uh, and then in Luke, Jesus, in one of his stories, he said, in hell, he was in torment. To me, the greatest torment is not being with the one you love. I've, I've heard it said that in hell, you will be isolated totally 
heard somebody else say, in hell you'll be isolated except the one that gave you a rough time on earth will be there with you. And uh, But uh, I think it's, uh, you know, I don't know. It, it doesn't really say other than, you know, if we're in the presence of God, we're blessed and we're apart from Him. Wow. It, it's it's just the worst it, we could have possibly imagined. Pastor Wade dealt with the next one last week. What is the way to heaven? Uh, and, uh, you know, faith in Jesus as our Savior. He used two words last week to... De- show how it, how uh, we get to heaven. First of all, done. It has been done by Jesus Christ. Everything's been accomplished. And not the other word, do. We don't do anything. It's a gift. So through faith in Jesus' sacrifice, we have life forever with God. That's the way. And then, um, you know, we, we've, we struggle with Sometimes, some people do. Is Jesus the only way? And we've read that a couple times. But Peter said in his message, Salvation is found in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. You know, there is only one way. And that's Jesus Christ. So... Let's go to uh, what is the way to hell. You know, we could say sin and the lack of faith. The wages of sin is death. That's eternal separation from God. And then um, whoever in John 3, we always say John 3.16, but you go two verses down. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. So it's through faith. It's faith that makes a difference. The, one of the most difficult questions are why, why do good people go to hell? And in... Romans 3, it says, No one, none is righteous, no, not one. For there is no distinction, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So first of all, are there any good people? Can any of us stand before God? Perfect, without Jesus. No. Okay, we have that answered. And it says, He, that's God, wants all people to be saved and to learn the truth. God condemns no one to hell. Our sins do. We, we send ourselves there. We choose to go our own way. It, you know, it, it doesn't seem fair, but if we recognize that what isn't fair is that Jesus gave His life so that we might live with Him forever. That's what's not fair. None of us deserve heaven. But what a gift. Should be people should Christians be afraid of death? No, the best is yet to come. Uh, most of us are very aware of Psalm twenty three, another psalm that's often read at uh, funerals. What what beautiful words. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? For you are with me. We have nothing to fear. And I, I love 1 Corinthians 15. Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. So that's a real negative picture there. But thanks be to God, He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. We live as victorious people. The game of life is still going on, but we know that we have the victory at the end. What comfort and hope that gives us. When we die, do we go immediately to heaven? Now we start getting into some of the foggy stuff. Uh, 
You know, I, I looked at these verses and sometimes I say, how do they get that from that? And it, it's, we, we have to remember God's view of time is different than ours. I think that's one of the key factors. But this is um, what was said in God's Word. Uh, I am. I am the. I, I. I guarantee this truth. Today you will be with me in paradise. That's heaven. So there's no doubt that he was going to be with him there. And then the next one, in it he also went to proclaim his victory to the spirits kept in prison. That's when Jesus, after he died, between then and the resurrection, he went to hell to proclaim his victory. So there were uh, people in hell. So from what I've read, basically it's saying when we die, we go directly to heaven right away. Our souls go to heaven, not our bodies. At, res at the day of uh, judgment, resurrection, then our bodies will be reunited and we'll have a new and glorious body. You know what? It doesn't matter to me. I I whatever God has in store for me as his child, I accept. But that's, that's the best I can do. Here, here's one that we can't have any doubt on. When an unbeliever dies, will they get a second chance to repent on Judgment Day? And, and Jesus' words, I, I tell you, no, but unless you repent, you too will all perish. When we die, what, what did I say? Right away, we go to heaven or hell. Now, I know some of you are from Catholic background. Or others, you might have been influenced by some other things. But the work has been done. There's nothing more we need to do or can do to change the plight of that person. We are either in heaven or hell. Nothing that I can do is going to make any difference to my mom and dad right now. And they don't need anything Done because Jesus did it all. They are with him in heaven. Here's one I'd like to skip over, but I won't. What is the rapture? There has been so much on the rapture written by very gifted people. Great books, movies. Uh, you know, a rapture is a taking up uh, and... In the, the let me find it here, First Thessalonians four seventeen, it says, "Then we, who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together, and with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so we'll, we will all change. Uh, we will so we will all change always be with the Lord. So." Yes, we believe in the rapture, but in a different way than some Christians believe. You know, there, there's different ways of looking at the end times. Some of you are probably very familiar with it. Others aren't. I am not going to be the one that says that the Missouri Synod has got everything right. You know what I mean? I, I, I was brought up thinking that we had it all right and everybody else had it wrong. Who's to say? That's why I don't want this on YouTube. <laughs> I told her, don't put it on. But you, you know what I'm saying? Who, we don't know. I can accept what other people believe. I can't accept a second chance. But I can't accept looking at how it's going to happen differently because in the book of Revelation 20 to 22, those chapters just gives so many beautiful pictures and it tells us what's going to happen but if you read that and I read that we might come out with different answers different views 
But the, the important point is, if we believe in Jesus Christ as our Savior, we will be raptured. We will be taken up into heaven to be with God forever and ever. This is a study in itself that you could spend forever on. Well, there's, Jesus talks about the end times. And what's his most important word to us concerning death? And it, it's, it's not knowing all these things. It's being prepared. Be ready. And as the verse says, um, you know, we don't know the hour or the time that's going to come. I, I just get the biggest kick out of these guys that say, on May 22nd, night, you know, this is the last day. Nobody knows. I mean, Jesus said, I don't even know. So be prepared. And how are we prepared? Through faith in Jesus Christ. Here's another good one. What Will heaven be on earth or a new place? Yes. I mean, I, I don't... Who knows where it'll be? Who knows? It, you know, it says a new Jerusalem. I don't think it's going to be where Jerusalem is. Jerusalem's a picture of where God is. But maybe it will be where Jerusalem is. Who's to say? God can do it how He wants. If it's going to be where Jerusalem is, it's going to be a big, expanded place, isn't it? Because there's going to be a lot of us there. And before we're done, we're going to share the gospel so a lot more can go with us. But there again, it's a picture of where it is. Uh, do people in heaven experience differences? Do people in hell experience differences? In other words, you know, do, do what, does what we do in this life make a difference in heaven? Well, I do know one thing. It says it will be judged in heaven. But but we're not going to be judged on our sins because God doesn't see our sins anymore, right? Those are taken away. We, we don't have to stand and make account for our sins. But we will, according to God's Word, be rewarded for the good things that we've done. And in hell, people will be judged by their sins, and they will suffer. Some will suffer more than others. I have a feeling that someone that uh, is in hell and didn't have the joy of living in the United States and hearing the name of Jesus isn't going to suffer the same way as somebody who rejected Jesus and knew it. You know, it, 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 when you blow an opportunity, doesn't it drive you nuts? But if you never had that opportunity, you don't even think about it. But there will be different uh, degrees, different levels. Different. But in heaven, we're not going to go around and say, boy, I wish I would have done more. Look what they have. There's not going to be any envy in heaven. There's not going to be any uh, feeling sorry that we blew it. The thief on the cross who was a scoundrel his whole life, according to what we know, but believed in Jesus at the end, is going to have... All the joys of heaven. Just like Paul. But they, they'll probably have different roles or you know, Who knows? But there will be differences. Um, you know, we don't... Lutherans don't talk about this very much. And the people that I've heard talk about it use it as a motivation sometimes. You know, if, if you do this, you'll be rewarded in heaven. I don't think that's the way it works. That's the wrong motivation. If you're doing it for the reward, you're doing it for the wrong reason, and so you're not rewarded. You, you do it because God loves you. Who is the giver of life and death? I just wanted to deal with this because I, I, I hear all the time, well, Jesus took that person home or something like that, and that's true. But my future is in your hands, the psalmist writes. And then in uh, Romans eight thirty one and 32, it talks about how God will graciously give us all things. He only wants the best for us. We know that God is sovereign, okay? 
That means that he is in control of all things. He can do anything. But in God's sovereignty, he has given us a free will. So the bad things that happen, God did not cause. It's sin in the world. God allowed that young child to go to be with him in heaven. And that child is rejoicing in his presence. But God didn't necessarily cause that. We live in a fallen world. Do you see the difference? I think that's important. We can't blame the bad things on God. It's sin. And, okay, I just wanted to end on this note here, the last one. How should we live each day? You know, knowing what we do about heaven and earth, there's all sorts of ways to live. And these are just a couple thoughts. First of all, I'm not going to read these verses. Just look at it. First one talks about the battle going on. So we need to be uh, armed with the armor of God. We need to be aware that there's a battle going on. We, don't, we only want to receive what God offers us. We don't want to lose out. So we clothe ourselves with the armor. Know there's a battle. And then be victorious. How ridiculous it is to go on a football field without any equipment. It's rough enough with it on. We need to be clothed. And then the next one says, basically, you want to live with one eye on heaven. Don't get caught up with the things of this life. You know, focus on heavenly things, not earthly things. Next, whatever we do, we do for God's glory. That is a challenge for me. Everything, uh, my selfish desires get in the way so often. But, you know, life, you get a taste of heaven when you do it God's way. You know what happened five, 25 years ago? I just heard this on the radio. 25 years ago this last week, who died? Was it, was it 25? No, it couldn't be 25. 10 years ago? Well, you can't know if I can't, don't know the question. <laughs> Michael Jackson. How many years ago was that? Ten? Five? Okay, five. I thought there was a five in it. it boy, we had so much press. Who else died on that day? Mother Teresa. Mother Teresa died on that same day. What a great example she is for us to live for the glory of God. And Paul is a great example, too, for me to live, for to me to live as Christ and to die as gain. He says, I struggle. I don't know which is better. I know that heaven's going to be so good, but I need to stay here and do the work of the Lord. I challenge you to do that. Uh, Abby, would you put up the video, please? And just like to, uh, you know, we need the faith of a child. And after the video, we'll uh, praise the Lord.
We, we missed the last part that said four days later he was in heaven with Jesus. So he's now, he knows exactly what heaven is like today. Let us stand and we'll, we'll praise God. And uh, j- just remember the, the verse from uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 15, but thanks be to God. He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. I don't know whether the streets will be gold. Why not? Everything's going to be beautiful beyond measure. And if that's what's beautiful to you, I have a feeling it will be that way. But just have the faith, that simple faith that child had that, uh, you know, heaven is a beautiful place.